Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and uh, ski conditions. We'll start off with the uh, the cam here in Beaver Creek, Colorado, where we have had an incredibly warm three or four days strung together here, uh, not just at lower elevations, but all the way up to the top of the high peaks in Colorado, running 40 to 45 degrees, for example, at Midvale, just up the road from Beaver Creek for the last few days. So that has had a definite impact on the snowpack. But, uh, I mean, if you can get out, I mean, this is like true spring skiing here. But we need, because our snowpack is still lagging as it is across the West in a number of locations, we need snow. And it does look like we're going to be entering a much more active pattern here. And, and I'm going to take us all the way into this upcoming weekend to show you that. But that is uh, Beaver Creek right now. Uh, cloudy for the time being. There's a little wave that's passing through Colorado. You can see it right there with clouds and a flash of maybe some rain or snow showers. But on the back side, what's most interesting to me is what you can't see. It's out here into the uh, the Pacific. So what we'll do is we'll zoom out and let me show you this uh, this low pressure. You can see that it is. It's got the spiral. I mean, this thing looks like its own galaxy out here let me mark the low right there and then you've got the spin the circulation so this is what's going to be the big game in town over the next probably five to seven days it will start to throw some moisture into the interior ahead of it i think places like the tetons and also idaho will get some snow over the next 24 hours as it starts to push some moisture in those directions and then down the road it will be much more substantial across the inner mountain west so that's the setup for right now look at the jet stream i'm going to stop this tomorrow and show you how the jet is going to take that moisture and favor some of the interior locations right there you see the jet is pointed directly at the tetons and parts of uh, also uh, idaho and also into california for that matter so the moisture will get moved into the interior and we'll get a little bit of more graphic snow over the top of Jackson Hole and Grand Targhee and Big Sky. So tomorrow will be a good ski day if you want powder in those locations. Now by the end of the week, the entire jet is completely different. So look at the clock. It's Saturday at 5 a.m. Gigantic dip in the jet stream. This is really interesting. There's a lot of, there's a lot of energy. I showed you how large this low is. This time of March, in particular, you have to watch for these southern track storms as to where they go and exactly where they set up. The storm track becomes critical. We could be talking about some very heavy snows by the time we get into Friday, Saturday, Sunday across Colorado in particular. Um, so down the road, this could be a very interesting setup. So there's your future radar by the morning. As I was uh, pointed out, as I was talking about, you've got snow into the interior, may even brush the Wasatch for that matter by tomorrow morning. Then we'll focus, refocus on that western low and, and look at this. So it, it's continuing to send these little packages of moisture, little appetizer snows out ahead of it and into the interior while the main low is still hanging back here. That's where the primary dip in the jet stream is located as we head through the week. So that's Wednesday at 5.15 in the morning. Let's move it into Thursday. You can see what happens. The low begins to move into the interior and make that southern track. And what it's doing is, and, and I talked about this as well, this diagonal area of snow, this arc will start to fan out ahead of the low and basically kind of be carried in by the jet. This is the area of uncertainty. You know, will it set up right over the Wasatch? by Thursday or Wednesday into Thursday uh, and will it of course arc into Colorado but where will this arc of precip exactly set up that's a really interesting part of this forecast as well so that's Thursday morning here we are on Friday you saw the spin roll down into southern Nevada that's that low now let me just mark this because where this low exactly goes from this point Friday into Saturday out of um, out of Ca Southern Cal and Southern Nevada, uh, that's going to be the key to where we position the heaviest snow between Friday and Saturday. One more stop here on the future radar. And uh, watch Colorado um, as this rolls ahead. This is going to be very interesting. Um, when we see these lows this time of March, you can start to get some very heavy snow bands and what we like to call upslope flow into the uh, into the front range of Colorado, we could be talking some pretty decent snows up on the continental divide of Colorado and certainly in southern Colorado as well. And I'm very interested to see where this band, how close it gets to the Wasatch of uh, Utah 
And certainly Tahoe's will be another place to watch with this type of setup. So that is going to be something. And, and again, that's Friday into Saturday on the, uh, the future radar, tracking that southern low. That's going to be the big game, the main player in the extended forecast. And this will also bring temperatures down across the west. Like I was saying, they've been running way too warm. So that low will bring the temperatures down. Okay, what about accumulations? So between today, tonight, and Tuesday morning, Again, I'd look at Jackson Hole, I'd look at the Tetons, I'd look at Big Sky, uh, just a touch there at Alta and uh, Park City, the Wasatch, and a little bit in California. Again, that's just by tomorrow. Between Tuesday and Wednesday morning, we'll start to add a little bit more of accumulation. Let me bring this up to, the, uh, to Wednesday here. You can see some of the precip sliding through. Let's look at accumulation there. We've added a little bit in Colorado by Wednesday morning and quite a bit over Squaw, Shasta, and a little bit down to Mammoth. Um, we've added some in the Wasatch, too, by Wednesday morning. So you can see the amounts right there. Now, between Wednesday and Thursday, um, the numbers in Colorado continue to tick up. We've added a little bit more in the Sierra. Between Thursday and Friday, the numbers in Colorado keep going up. Now, this is the point where we could start to see the numbers in Colorado really start to go. Look at Brian Head with that southern track on that low. That comes up to almost two feet. And the numbers I have in Colorado by Saturday could be on the conservative side. These They could be much higher than this, especially on the Continental Divide tilting down along the Front Range and certainly through Silverton and Wolf Creek. So very interesting setup with this, uh, this large Pacific storm coming on shore. Um, we'll keep things interesting through the week. I'll keep it updated as well, and always appreciate you tuning in here. I hope you have a great day.